I need to know, Connor. When he came out of that truck waving a white handkerchief, was it you that put the bullet through his ear? Blame fate now. Is that part of God's plan, Connor? my country, my people. If you'd seen everyone you'd ever loved, or had ever loved, you'd die. But you carry on. Aoife was the most dear to me. She was beautiful. I was made an orphan when an IRA mortar attack on Rome killed my entire family. Three generations, minus me, gone in an instant. My little sister, Rasheen, liked to put ribbons in her hair. I like to pull him out. She liked to blow out the candles and everyone else's birthday cake. Never got to blow out more than five of her own. It was the day of her fifth birthday. We were late coming back from the shops. My grandmother just laid out Roshin's cake in front of her. And then everything seemed to slow. I saw the far window kind of breathe in and out. I watched the shockwaves rip my little sister to shreds. There was a half-assed IRA plot abandoned ten yards from my front door. Who are you with? Aoife and her old brother. You mean Aoife and Killian Mercer? Mm. Aoife and I were very much in love. Even then, we knew we were meant to be together. After the explosion, what happened next? After the funeral, my uncle took me to England. Manchester. Right, yeah, that's right. The boy next door and I became very close. Kevin Powell. Shortly after I moved there, there was a pub bombing in London. Local kids thought they'd have a go. Six of them. Bash the resident Irish kid. Right outside his house. Kevin stood by me. He always stood with me. Looked back at his dad was standing in the front door. Look in his eyes. I was recruited that day. An SAS recruit at 14. Sounds unlikely. As unlikely as Georgie Best being drafted by United at the same age. Eventually, Kevin and I were given our first assignments. Mine was repatriation. I was to groom old relationships, find a way back in find a way to infiltrate the IRA. After my return to Cross Glen, I lost touch with Kevin. I began by reforging my relationship with Eva's little brother, Killian. Killian was always hanging around, tagging along as long as I can remember. He was there before I moved away. He was there in Cross Glen when I got back in 81. What's this? Cherry popping time? I don't like cherries much. Oh, you might like this one. It was Killian. 
It was my way into the IRA. Shut the fuck up. Who is he? What has he done? This is our land. No trespasser. We've saved a good one for you, Connor Boyle. He's SAS. Aren't you? Not very nice not wearing a uniform, was it? Thought you could slip in, didn't you? Infiltrate. Report back on activities. Assassinate. That's your mandate, isn't it? We're going to damage you, son. It was a situation I prepared for him and briefed on before I went in. That I might be put in a situation where I'd have to kill one of us. At all costs. Maintain my cover. Heavy, isn't it? Stand him up. The real problem here was that I wanted to break protocol. Come on, Connor. Paint the water with him. Why? Why would you consider playing your cover? If they weren't here, your family would still be alive, Connor! Because the first man I ever put a bullet into. Where's Kevin? The only man who ever stood with me. Did this execution make it easier when it came to your subsequent missions? Like the one near Jones Brown? No, it didn't. Ireland was forever changed for me. I was undercover, an IRA infiltrator working for the British. My SAS handler called me to a meeting after a botched Norman truck job. He was to hand over a suitcase full of cash so I could prove to the IRA that the mission had been a success. He dragged me to a bar on the Shankle Road, a no-go place for any Catholic, especially then. He was never gonna let me walk away after the disaster in Jonesboro. Jacob. You're late. What the fuck have you got me meeting you in the air for? Relax, mate. You're among friends, remember? This is fucked. Being here is gonna get me killed. Where's the fucking money? The bag at your feet. Buddy, case of pain for my friend here. Relax, son. You're not your son. I don't want to drink. I'm fucking out of here. But you and your excitable associate not fucked up the armored truck assignment. This wouldn't have been necessary. You've exposed me here as well. Ta, oh, buddy. The worst thing for an asset in the field to become is a liability. Do we understand each other? Drink your drink and pretend you're enjoying yourself. I'm at the door first. Leave at the rear after you've drunk your drink. The driver will meet you and get you safely back. That's it, son. Hi, <laughs> that she was. See you soon. I'm sorry. 
Hey, wait. Why don't you leave the lovely lady alone, babe? Well, let's just take it easy, right? Hey? <laughs> hey, where are you from, huh, Paddy? And what are you doing on the shank of... <laughs> The last thing she felt was hatred and sadness because of me. I need to know. Connor. What part did you play in my father's death? I was supposed to be clean. Two drivers, one truck. I had more cash, money for the cause. British workers, they came off for all sorts of reasons. They weren't all soldiers. Some construction, skilled workers, transport, truck drivers. Your father was driving the truck that day. He was one of thousands of contractors, you know. Just one of hundreds who were victims of circumstance. Victims of circumstance? Blame fate. Now. Was that part of God's plan, Connor? I remember him. He was a good man. When he came out of that truck waving a white handkerchief, was it you that put the bullet through his ear? It wasn't. It wasn't. Please, tell me. I'm sorry, Anna. It wasn't supposed to happen that way. Don't be frightened. You got the last piece of your story now. You got your book to write. Just needed you to understand. 